Here's a story. You know, we've been on the crime and punishment beat, so to speak, this past, you know, couple months of the show. Russell's trip down to Louisiana did a couple of stories out of there. He's got a third one that we will get to probably this week at some point. Uh, But here's a story from Florida. Uh, She only served 10 months behind bars. Florida still slapped her with a $127,000 bill. That's right. Under Florida's pay-to-stay law, inmates are charged $50 for every day of their sentence, including time they never spent incarcerated. So even if you get out early, you have to pay the state you have to pay 50 the bucks fee. a day. Yeah. This, this, is, this is a classic example of what happens when people are afraid of their government and the government is not afraid of their people. Exactly. Imagine you've just been released from prison in Florida. You have every intention of turning your life around. You plan to stay out of trouble, get a job, and follow the rules of your parole. Then you find out you owe a six-figure bill. In Florida and most other states, inmates are charged for the cost of their time in prison. The practice, called a pay-to-stay, leaves many former offenders with staggering debt. In Florida, prisoners are charged $50 every day of their original sentence, meaning they keep getting charged even if they are released early. When former inmates inevitably fail to pay this massive bill because they have a hard time getting jobs because they have a record, it can prevent them from ever moving on from their period spent behind bars. Where I'm at today, I'm truly being stopped by one single barrier, and it is a dollar sign, Shelby Hoffman told WFTS Tampa Bay, a local uh, news station. Hoffman was hit with a $127,000 bill for a seven-year prison sentence, even though she only served 10 months. Since her release from prison, Hoffman has gotten clean and rebuilt her life. She's soon to graduate with a bachelor's degree. However, she can't start her dream career as a case manager because of her outstanding pay to stay bill. So we're going to see this report. So uh, we're going to go to this uh, news piece here, which uh, puts a little bit of meat on the bones here. The state of Florida had what is called an exemption from disqualification. And they told me that um, you are not eligible because you owe over $127,000 for an incarceration fee from the state of Florida. What was your reaction? I cried. I was hysterically crying. I literally felt like my entire past just punched me in the face. When I was 13, uh, my parents split up. So it caused, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of dysfunction, a lot of misdirection in the household. So I found a boyfriend that unfortunately got me hooked on opiates. I was snorting them, smoking them, and then eventually, you know, I started shooting them. And this was all while you were a teenager? Yes. After turning 18, Hoffman was charged with a third degree felony. I had pawned something that, um, you know, was stolen. Then a burglary charge. Both of those charges are drug influenced. Ever since, you know, 10 years ago, I've never caught another charge. I told him, I said, listen, Your Honor, you keep putting me on the streets, I'm going to die. Like, I need help. Hoffman was sentenced to the Phoenix house for a year, but did not complete the program. The director kicked me out. Because of that, the judge sentenced Hoffman to seven years in prison. She served 10 months. The judge allowing her to participate in a youth offender boot camp. I had paid everything off. I petitioned the, you know, the courts to get off of probation. He clapped for me and said, you know, you above anybody deserve this. You know, congratulations, Ms. Hoffman. I've taken pictures with him, given him a hug, and he wrote me a handwritten Christmas card telling me he knew I could do it. I finally felt like, you know, the book was closed. You know, your redemption is complete. Within three years, when applying for that exemption to work in case management, her dream job, Hoffman found out that she, like thousands of others, still owes the state $50 a day for the seven years of her original sentence, $127,750. You charged me for a cell that I didn't occupy? I felt so tricked and so fooled. There is no ladder with them that will ever truly allow you to be a second chance anything. There isn't, and they make sure of it. Hoffman's grand. Yeah. America, fuck yeah! Well, the well, free. It, well, and this is, you know, we did the story here and on Jimmy's, uh, but we show Colin Jost's 
just disgustingly craven monologue at the end of his set at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. This freedom is so rare in the world. And all the journals, ah, oh, but are they, are they covering this? Are they covering this? You should hear about this every day. Most states charge you for your incarceration. Why is this not a national scandal? This is something else we should do a story about. Fucking uh, property seizures. That, that There is so much abuse of if you get accused of a drug crime, they'll just take all your shit. Whether you're guilty or not, a lot of times you've had people who later on were not convicted and they never got their stuff back. They never got their money back. This this is a very good example of what happens when you have a, a population that no one really cares about. This really shows you the true state of uh, the true face of state power. This is what states will do if nobody pushes them not to and nobody cares about prisoners right nobody cares about drug addicts that's why they're able to essentially keep slavery going by another name yes yes because they're able to blame the victim right yes that's it. this woman this 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 woman they, gets they involved in a lot with of these a, prisons yeah. i'm sorry but in a lot of these prisons they've privatized the phone network so so that phone call you would make to your relative now you're paying 10 20 mm -hmm. to call home because they know they can get away with it. Exactly. And nobody cares about that. Ah, fuck you then. You shouldn't, shouldn't have, have done committed the crime. The crime. You shouldn't exactly. have done the crime. Shouldn't have done the crime. Shouldn't have done this. Shouldn't have done that. This is, I've always, I mean, this goes back to when I was a teenager, I realized that like the right wing vision of freedom is freedom to live exactly how they tell you to. Right. Yes. But if you right. step out of line ever so slightly, that can set you on a cycle of doom or on a path to doom that you can't ever reverse. And right. they'll go back, well, right. you shouldn't have done the thing that set you on the path. Well, you're not really free unless you're free to err, right? You have to be free right. to make mistakes or right. else you're not right. really free. This poor woman gets involved with the wrong guy as a teenager. She gets hooked on drugs. She gets booked at age 18, right? I mean, and now what? Now she's $127,000 in the hole for time she didn't even serve. Time so you're charging her serve. rent. Right. You're wow. charging her rent for time that she didn't even spend in the unit. Maybe that's part of why sentencing is so out of control, right? Judge, could, well, what if the judge handed down a 20 year sentence and she got out in 10 months? Then she'd owe what? 350 grand, 400 grand, whatever the math comes out to be, right? They can just, once they get you in the system, once they get a hold of you, and once they deem you unworthy, they could do whatever they want to you. Yep. They can do whatever they want to. Yep. And the idiots out here are who I blame for this, who say exactly what you say. Well, you shouldn't have done it. Okay, so mm -hmm. you live your life exactly the way you're supposed to. Anybody out there has done that? I don't hear anything. No, right? Unless you're free to fuck up, you're not actually free. And this is extortion. I mean, this is just horrible. And like you said, why isn't this everywhere? Like, why don't people know? Like, there's so much that people don't know. There's so much right. abuse yep. by the state that yep. people don't even know about. I didn't know yep. you got charged. I didn't know you had to pay rent for prison. I thought you're there doing time. That is your debt to society. You owe society the time, right? And I think we make people spend way too much time in jail. I've said that over and over again, whether it's one case or, or the next. Uh, but now that starts to make a little more sense. They're getting paid for it. This is where the war on drugs, you see the tentacles of it in places yep. that you never even thought yep. to look, right? Like you yep. never even th would think of this. Who would even think? I, it never even occurred to me that people had to pay rent for being in prison. Apparently, well, this is not unique to Florida. Apparently, this is more widespread than that. I did not know it was most states. This is something I'd like to I'd like to look into more now that now that this came up. Uh, that might be worth doing a follow-up piece on. Um, but yeah, we got into that with the Louisiana thing because it's profitable. They're hiring out these prisoners to uh, to corporations <laughs> to make their food, to make clothes, to do work. They're fucking slaves. That's why they have so much incarceration. Uh, this, is, this is profitable for them. They make money uh, off of it. And this is what amazes me about all these people from northern states who you know consider themselves libs or whatever who have moved to florida okay so yeah they didn't lock down during covid 
but look at what the conservative vision of society is. You got Ron DeSantis running around, Mr. Free Speech. Oh, Mr. Anti-Woke, you can't shut down speech. He's saying he's going to expel everybody from Florida universities if they protest for Palestine. Yep. The most, one of the most draconian abortion laws in the country is about to go into effect in Florida. This is, this is, these people are not your friends. They're not your friends just because they, uh, they will speak out about, uh, puberty blockers for 12 year olds, which good doesn't mean <laughs> that these are your, these are your allies. Please clap.